Life is not about showing, proving. I, I know of cultures, not only here. Trust me, it's not a problem only here. It's a problem across the globe where weddings today are becoming so big and so fancy. And everyone struggles. The amount of money that a community spends on a wedding goes into the billions because every person who attends wears a new set of clothing. No wonder there are so many people who are tailors today because that's a booming business, subhanallah. Booming business. Mashallah, we need a new set of clothing. How can I wear the same one that I wore last week? Oh, that's an embarrassment. Wallahi, you can. And why not? Why not? You are setting a trend that is dangerous. Our children will not be able to live it. They will have to steal to live it. They will have to do haram to live it. Let them utilize those resources in something more constructive. Not on this. Just go with something plain and simple. Look good. So what if you wore it so many times? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. We become such that we run behind these things. If Allah has blessed you with wealth, alhamdulillah, but you have a problem, you, you are setting a trend. The trend, be conscious. Others might not be able to afford it. I know in Europe and in other places, even in South Africa, and perhaps even here, people take bank loans in order to show a wedding bigger than what they can manage. For what? Have it simple, straightforward. Get a few people and that's it. I gave you the example of Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Mashallah. If you can afford it, Alhamdulillah. But like I said, be careful. You are setting a trend. Others will say, what type of a wedding is this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, utilize your wealth before poverty overtakes you. How will poverty overtake you? A day will come when you won't have that money. And a day will come when you will die with the money and leave it behind. One of the two. Either Allah takes it away while you are alive, which has happened to many, or Allah takes you away and leaves the wealth behind. What did you achieve by it? What did you achieve? Did you deposit any of your money with Allah or you just left it behind for your children to fight over? The children to fight over. Sometimes this is what happens. People fight over the wealth left by their parents and I, I wonder, but can't you do your own thing? Why are you worried about what your father left, what your mother left? I know of a case where one wealthy person came to me and told me I have a problem with my son. Why? He told me, give me my inheritance now. <laughs> ah, ah. Wallahi, can you imagine? And the father says, but I'm alive. He says, I don't care, alive or not, give it to me now. Hey, Allahu Akbar, give me my inheritance now. Ha'udhu billah. That statement, and wallahi it's a fact, that statement is so dangerous, it goes to show how lazy we are, how sometimes we haven't even taught our children to earn a living, but we, we have. We haven't passed the baton on to the children, be happy with what you have, don't worry about others. Live in, live in your capacity, even if people think that you are a wealthy person, but you know you are not. Some people, they dress well. From their dressing, everyone thinks, hey, they must be multi-millionaires, but they are poorer than what you are who is talking. But they just know how to dress, that's all. Right? MashaAllah. You know, there was a, a, a man, another wealthy man, he was wearing a watch. I told him, you have a nice watch. Many years ago, you have a nice watch. He said, I bought it for 20 riyals in Makkah from one of the shops that sell things for nothing. I said, oh, that's interesting. He said, but when I sell it, I'll sell it for 4,000 US dollars. I said, how? He said, people just offer me because they think as a rich man, I'll be wearing a very expensive watch. Imagine, imagine. Sorry, the wealthy here, I'm not giving you ideas. Eh? I'm only letting you know. When people look at something you have, they think, mm, this must have cost you three, 4,000. You know, ah, I'll offer you four. Okay, take it. May Allah forgive us. Look at how, you know, Personally, I cannot tell a difference between a Chinese product and another product. I can't. Sometimes those look more uh, smart than the other ones. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. What is it all about? I really don't know. And that's why now when you see an original Rolex, you look at it and say, is that from China? What? 
What? What did you just say? You have embarrassed me. No, I didn't. There are some in China that look better than this. And by the way, Chinese products are quite good to be very fair. It only depends how much you are willing to pay. It's like the story of the fans. You know the story. Can I say it again? They say, you know, in China, they make the best products. A lot of what you have original, like our phones, iPhones, Samsungs, whatever, many of the components are actually made in China. So people look at China and think, ah, you know, but China, they base the product on how much you are prepared to pay for it. So if you want a watch worth $5, they'll make a $5 watch. You want a watch worth $500, they make a $500 watch, etc. Even the toys, some of them, you've only paid one naira for it. As soon as you do this, it breaks. They say, well, you paid one, you used it for one, you see. So what happened is, there was a miserly man. He was preparing for the wedding of his daughter. And the wife kept saying, what are you doing? The wedding is near. What are you doing? The wedding is near. One day when he was walking on the street, he saw a man on the side selling these fans. You know, they open the fan nicely and they actually have a fan that fans you. Subhanallah. So he said, how much are these fans? He was told, ah, it's one cent. No, one cent. So he said, these ones are 10 cents. These ones are a dollar. But these ones here, they are one cent. He said, give me four boxes. He got four big boxes, right, let's take it home. He paid a little bit and it went home. When he went home, the next day, his wife told him, hey, listen, you know, I tried those fans. I opened one. As soon as I did this once, it broke. Then I opened another one. I did it once, it broke. He said, can't be. Those are proper fans. So he said, let's see. He opened one. He just did this. He went one time and it broke. He did it again, it broke. So he took the boxes. Let's go back to the man. He went back to the man, the man says, to the, one man says to the other, you know what, I need to return these fans, there's something wrong with them. He says, no, what's wrong with them? He says, they are breaking. He said, how much did you pay for them? He said, I paid a cent each. He said, ah, did you read the instructions? He said, no. He said, if you paid a cent, there are different instructions for that fan. What are the instructions? This fan, look. Read the instruction. Okay, open it. He opened it. Right, put it in front of your face. Put it. Now move your head. You are not supposed to move the fan. You paid one cent. You move your head. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Moral of the story is, you get a product based on how much you are prepared to pay for it. You want to pay one cent? You have to move your head. You want to pay 10 cents to a dollar? You can use the fan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So my brothers and sisters, the same way, when we have wealth, what are we giving to Allah? Allah says He wants 2.5% in most cases. He wants 2.5% from us only. We find it so difficult to calculate that and to give it yet. There is no merit for a person who does only his farad except that he has fulfilled just the farad. It's like a person going for salah, they do the farad and walk out. What happens? Allah tells you, you want to gain real closeness. Don't just do what is compulsory. Do more. Sunnah, nafila, etc. Then you will get close to us. You are healthy. Why do you want to run out of the masjid immediately? Why do you want to rush out of your salah quickly? Do more. If you do 12 units of sunnah through the day, you will get jannah. So why don't you read some sunnah? Salah after your farad. The same applies to your wealth. You work out 2.5%, it works out to so much. You are saying, mm, but I'm not liquid, you know, I owe. You know, the more you have, the more your, the 2.5% is going to be. I had a brother who once told me, I'm going to give 1% of my turnover to Allah. At that time, his turnover was 10,000. It got to 100,000, it got to a million, it got to 10 million. He came and asked me, you know what, do I still have to just give the 1%? Why? It's 1%. But because 1% of 10 million is no longer 1% of 10,000, shaitan comes to you and says, <coughs> maybe there's a way out. Give it. Say 2% and move. Allah gave me more, I'll give more. When you had nothing, you were promising one. When you've got something, you want to chop from the one. How? It's the opposite. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته